Hi, and welcome to Let's Talk MacArthur. In this month's bonus episode on health, fitness, and well-being with Chantelle Yeoman from Technofunk Fitness Studios, Norellan and Campbelltown. Welcome, Chantelle. Thank you. How are you today? Yeah, very, very well. Very, very well. You'd be looking forward to uh, to getting towards the end of the restrictions so you can open the, the studios back up again. Yes, very much so. Yep. It's been interesting to see the mixed comments from people over the last three months about uh, inspirational stories of, of weight loss and increased fitness. Uh, and those that are a little bit more like mine of, um, of stacked on kilos, uh, <laughs> poor diet decisions and excuse making. So I've been really looking forward to these sessions to, uh, to see what you've got to, to bring to us. So what have you got for us today? Cool. Well, I think a lot of um, the community are definitely in the same boat at the moment being at home. Um, so what I thought today I would talk about would be um, the components that I personally believe everybody needs for a healthy, active lifestyle. And what I've done is kind of broken it down into four different topics that we'll talk about. Um, and um, yeah, I'll just give my tips, I guess, on each of those and hope that it helps someone, especially now that we have been given, I guess, a date of such that we can kind of resume our normal lifestyles. Um, hopefully it might motivate some people to kickstart, um, you know, some movement and things like that before we get back into our normal lifestyle and routines. Me included. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, do I just kick yep. off from here? Go yep. for it. It's cool. all yours. So I have written it down because there is quite a lot to uh, obviously discuss. Um, and I sometimes can go off on a bit, of, a bit of a tangent when I'm talking about these topics. So I've got my point, so I stick to them. So first, I wanted to start off with talking about, I guess, each of the components that we need. So first and foremost, for any change um, in relation to health and fitness um, or any result, whether that be um, muscle gaining, maintaining um, a physical result of like increasing your strength or anything like that, you need to have goals, but you also need to have an understanding of the components of everything that you need to get that. So I've broken it down into the areas of diet and nutrition training and exercise, rest and recovery, and also mindset and attitude. Now, what I do with our eight-week challenges and how I kind of educate everyone is on the equation of 80% nutrition, 20% exercise, and 100% mindset. And that's what I personally believe will get you guys results, whether that's in, it can be health and fitness, or it can be anything within in your life that you're aiming for. So if we break it down into all of those categories, I've now got obviously the tips that I'm going to talk about. But my very first one that I wanted to talk about is what um, I've recently learned in my sports nutrition certificate. So I've finally, after a year of studying my sports nutrition certificate, finished it, submitted all of my uh, last case studies and everything and have finally passed that. I'm just waiting for my certificate. So I'm super proud of myself for that because it was the hardest certificate I have ever, ever done. So it's I've, I've actually learned quite a lot um, in terms of what I'm about to talk about. So first and foremost, a lot of people think that health and fitness results are literally just diet and exercise, and that's it, just two components. But there is so much more that makes up what I refer to as the deep health wheel. And there is your diet, which is also your nutrition and your exercise, which is your training. But there's also your mindset. There's also sleep. There's hydration. There's your community and accountability and also your self-love and your mental well-being. And that makes up every single result that you'll get in health and fitness because it's not just one or the other or a black and white approach. So if we break down the very first equation, which is the 80% nutrition, so this is our diet and um, nutrition uh, section, this here is what is going to make or break any results that you have, okay? So in the most simplest form, um, so everyone can kind of understand it to um, lose fat or weight as, as such, 
you need to be in a calorie deficit. So the weight or the, the energy that you're consuming, so what you're eating needs to be less than what you're exerting, okay, for you to be in that calorie deficit. Then we have our weight maintenance. So if you just want to maintain your current condition, they have to be equal. So what you're consuming to what you're outputting needs to be equal. And then this is where lockdown um, is obviously going to be creeping on in. And what most people will be doing at the moment uh, is the weight gain model. So you're actually consuming more energy in than you're exerting because we're not as active because we are obviously at home and we have a lot more food readily available there at the fridge. So that's, that's where I think a lot of people kind of are in lockdown and it's completely normal. It's totally okay. But I wanted to put these tips together so that people can start to make those changes as we go back into our normal lifestyle and routines. So with that being said, I don't want everyone to think of changing nutritional habits as a diet because there is so many different diets in this world. Like they're like, I'm sure Everybody has tried so many different things to, to follow um, and everything will work if you do the work. So whether that's a keto diet, paleo diet, vegan diet, um, you know, high carb, low fat, all of those things, they all work if you work. Okay. So it ultimately comes down to you. And the real challenge with the nutrition aspect is that this is the single most thing that people struggle with. The training and the exercise is the easy part. This and what you're eating and consuming in your day is what's going to make or break any health and fitness result that you have got, okay? Then the real challenge comes with balancing the whole foods and the soul foods. So the 80-20 thing is also another diet approach that I like to um, teach people. And another thing that you could call this is like flexible dieting. So it allows you to have that flexibility to be chasing your goals and eating comfortably, but also eating the whole foods and foods in their natural state to be obviously moving your body towards wellness. And the number one thing with diet and nutrition, which is what I'm going to finish on for this section is consistency. Just like your training, consistency is key. So at the moment, me and Matt, um, or I should say, sorry, bad English, Matt and I, um, being in lockdown and renovating our house, and I'm just going to use it, our, us as an example, um, we, I know myself was eating really bad, like eating things that I would never really normally eat in my normal day-to-day -day life. Um, and buying things that I wouldn't normally buy. Matt was drinking more alcohol because we're having our trades at our house doing that. Uh, and then obviously finishing the, the day with a couple of beers that were leading to more than a couple. And over time, and maybe the first five weeks of lockdown, like we started to feel really gross, like just really lethargic and just uncomfortable within ourselves. So we were like, okay, right, let's let's change it. What are we going to do? So we've actually taken like a pretty... Um, pretty restrictive approach just to see if we could do it for the 30 days and this is our very last week and um, we have been following what is called a polo pescatarian diet so it's just chicken um, and whole foods nothing processed that's it and it's been very very difficult to do that but I've also learned a lot about myself because I'm someone who would eat bread every single day whether it's breakfast or lunch and I didn't realize how bloated I was feeling from eating that every day until I didn't have it. And I'm not going to lie, it's been a freaking struggle to not eat it because I'm constantly like wanting it because I'm telling myself I can't have it. But now being in the fourth week of that, I, I know I don't need it. And I feel amazing and light every single day from not having, even though it's not bad, like bread is not bad. It's definitely something that you can have. But for me, it was more of an issue of I was just eating it as like a comfort food. And now that I've consistently done that for three weeks and not had it, like I am feeling so good. And it didn't happen overnight, but I had to create that habit and use the consistency of not doing that and the self-talk, which I'll get to in our last point of telling myself that I don't actually need it. So consistency is key when it comes to nutrition. And I would definitely recommend if you are someone who you know, it doesn't really know the ins and outs of things about nutrition and diet, reach out. Um, personal trainers themselves are actually not qualified to be giving like meal plans and stuff like that. It's, it's out of their scope of practice unless they are actually qualified in some sort of nutrition field to do that. Um, but they can give um, advice based on like the Australian dietary guidelines and things like that too. So 
reach out to someone who you like and trust and they will be able to help you um, if qualified. If not, hopefully they'll refer to you to someone else who is for that section. Um, the next one is the training and the exercise. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is the, the component that is probably the easiest for everyone. And when I say the easiest, it's not really easy because you're stressing yourself out by going and exercising and it's hard and you're sweaty and you're huffing and puffing and your muscles fatigue. So it's not easy in that sense, but in application, it's easier for you to get to the gym and do a, a, an hour workout than it is to focus on 24 hours of nutrition. Okay. Yep. So the exercise, um, is the second most important part. And this is the 20% part or what I classify the 20% part. Um, now, exercise is beneficial, obviously, because our bodies are designed to move every single day. We are meant to be moving. And there's a saying that I like to say, you either move it or lose it. Because when you're sedentary, so many things start happening to your body. Your body starts breaking down and it starts not functioning properly because our limbs are literally designed to move every single day. The movement and exercise, training and exercise is going to be different for everybody, depending on what your goal, what your lifestyle is and what, what you're, you, know, you enjoy doing and what brings you good energy. But exercise prevents disease and injury okay I know you can get injuries from exercising if not done correctly so you definitely need to um, make sure that the next component that I'm going to talk about you add in as well to prevent the injury um, but yeah as I said bodies are designed to move so get up and move guys otherwise you will start to lose that mobility um, from a sedentary lifestyle my next tip would be to find a program that you enjoy now Again, just like diets and nutrition, everyone has tried so many different training programs, so many different gyms and all that. And that's totally fine because there, there comes a life, um, not a life expectancy, <laughs> there comes a time, a life, lifetime um, of your, I guess, your exercise um, where you kind of just get over what you're doing and you need to spice it up just for something different. And that's totally okay. Um, what's not okay though, is chopping and changing consistently, right? So we need consistency with our training as well, but you're not going to get results overnight in terms of building muscle mass or fat loss, um, from your training. So you need to be consistent with this as well. And when I say consistent, my tips for everybody. So if you're a beginner, start off with one to two sessions a week. If you're not doing anything, you do not want to overcommit yourself and go seven days a week of training because a your body will be so freaking sore, you're not going to be able to move. And two, it's not realistic because we have, you know, some of us have kids, we have work, uh, lifestyle, family, all that kind of stuff that you need to focus on. And seven days a week training is just not realistic for anyone. So I like to go with our um, education for our challenge. I always say to people, minimum three sessions. And if you do look at the Australian uh healthy eating guidelines and dietary guidelines it actually recommends minimum three sessions per week as well and personally just from experience of obviously owning and operating the gym for quite some time now three is manageable for people three is a good number and it also allows you to set a really good training schedule which is also really important now depending again on your goal and the outcome of whatever you are training for so if you you're training for a specific event um, obviously you need to apply yourself a little bit differently just to general population people. But if it's just for general benefit of healthy eating and exercising to maintain a healthy lifestyle, minimum three sessions. Because with the minimum three sessions, you can then set yourself a training schedule of either a Monday, Wednesday, or a fr um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And the reason why I always say to have a day in between is for rest and recovery, which is our next, next point. Um, but that allows you then to get the benefit of the exercise or the, the workout that you've done, rest for a day, and then go again at whatever, whatever that um, exercise or workout is going to be. Consecutive exercises are fine as well, depending on how well your body uh, recovers. And you also need to look at the performance of how you're performing. And I always say that three sessions per week or even four where you give 100% is better than six sessions where you're giving 50%. You're going to get more bang for your buck. Um, you're going to be more focused, more rested, and you're going to train and perform a lot better within those sessions. Now, that's obviously talking in like a gym aspect. 
But if you're someone who just wants to start leading a healthy, active lifestyle, start walking three times a week. And then if you're someone who wants to try and start to implement running with one of those uh, walks, why don't you start to do like a walk for 100 meters and then run for 20 meters or something like that? You just want to do the baby steps to get yourself to where you want to be. Um, but you also need to look at the overtraining aspect and the plateauing with your training as well. And they're going to come very, very quickly if your training is not fun and if there's not variety in that. Now, when I say that, that is, again, just for your general population, obviously, like a, a bodybuilder kind of aspect, that's completely different. You want to keep it the same so you can build that muscle mass. Um, and if you are training for a specific event, completely different again. So you need to be able to adapt your training to what your goal is, but just for your general health and fitness and well-being, um, variety is actually really, really good. Another thing with variety, I always say um, group training. Obviously, we do group training here, so I'm a little bit biased to the group training. Um, but group training, if it's the right program, can be beneficial. Now, speaking of what we offer here, um, finally, after six years or five, five to six years, I feel like our program is bang on um, because we do offer our strength. So we've got just your standard full body strength classes, which we do. We have a cardio class, which is purely just cardio and boxing. Um, then we do like a, a high intensity resistance. So it's just strength and conditioning together. We do that twice a week. And then we also offer a skills performance. So this is where you're going to focus on your agility, your reaction time and all those kind of things. But all of these sessions are full body sessions so that you're focusing on functional movement patterns that you're going to be using outside of the gym or outside of whatever program that you're doing. And then that's going to benefit you. So it's transferable from the gym to your, your lifestyle, right? And I feel like that's really, really important, not only for like, I guess, quality of life, but longevity as well. So functioning properly, um, again, going back to the move it or lose it thing, you want to make sure that you are focusing on that. And if you can only get to two or three sessions per week, you're better off focusing on the full body sessions where you do get more bang for your buck because you're working everything rather than just doing arms or back and then not doing that again for another few weeks because you've got to try and go through all of your body parts. Um, so your first two to three weeks as well. For, so let's backtrack to like a complete beginner. If you are starting it, please expect some sort of muscle soreness. It is your, your body is not going to bounce straight back to where you were. Everybody does have muscle memory. So if you were someone who has exercised frequently um, prior to, you know, being comfortable and not exercising in lockdown, um, just expect that the first two to three weeks, you're going to have some soreness and you're going to probably struggle physically and mentally, not just physically in the gym, okay? Because it's a hard slog to try and create that habit and that routine again. Um, so if you can just be realistic about it, it's going to be hard, but it's not going to last forever. It's only temporary. And then um, what else do I have here? The training schedule, setting your training schedule, as I said, for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever works with your lifestyle and stuff is going to be really, really beneficial to creating that consistency. And I like to say to people, especially people with kids who really can have the kids as an excuse of why they're not coming to the gym, um, is that it's your time for you to just focus on you. Because especially for our gym, you're here by yourself. You're here, you're putting yourself into your workout. It's one hour, get in, get it done, focus on yourself. You're going to become a better version of yourself and think about the road to what that goal is that you're doing and who you're becoming on the way to that journey is what's going to actually be really empowering and help motivate you with that consistency as well. And then the last thing is exercise. Some people love it, some people hate it. Let's be honest, a lot of people probably hate it because of the feeling of it but if you can kind of get past that the feeling that it gives you in terms of determination and mental clarity is what is really really empowering so I've got written here exercise not only changes your body physically but it changes your mind it changes your attitude and it changes your mood and that doesn't have to be an intense workout it can be a 30 minute walk out in the fresh air it can be a run it can be 
a cycle, like whatever it is that you enjoy doing, it's actually really uplifting to your mood and to your attitude. So definitely, if you're someone who feels like you're in a little bit of a funk, try and start with your one to two sessions a week and then increase from there. So that's the, the training and the exercise part. Did you have a question, Mark? I see you're smiling there. No, I just from, from that so far, I've got, um, you know, set, set yourself a schedule um, to, to make yourself sort of accountable to a time that Absolutely. you set for yourself. Yep. Um, because one of the hardest things to do is like it's it's going, well, do I need to get up today and do that? Or I could sort of, you know, eke it out a little bit longer in, in bed before I've got to get up because the office yep. is only down the hall uh, at the moment. Um, so that makes it pretty easy. Um, consistency, uh, the only thing I'm consistent with at the moment is dessert. So I probably need to have a look at that. Um, but, uh, but I, I've been, because I was cycling for a while and picked up some niggling injuries from that. So I changed it to walking um, and I've, I've only sort of been doing about 3Ks uh, in the morning or whatever. Uh, but now I'm finding because I'm repeating the same thing, doing that all the time, I'm starting to pick up some niggling injuries from that. Oh. So I think that advice of mixing it up a little bit is is, is probably pretty good. Uh, so I might actually have a look at that. I might get dust the bike off and and uh, do some walks and, and do some rides and and yeah, you know, do some other bits and pieces as well. So got to start yeah. somewhere, right? You do, absolutely. But also like your body, your body does have to adjust to what you're doing as well. Like in the, at the start of lockdown, I was like, right, I'm going to run. I'm going to run in lockdown. I lasted two weeks <laughs> because I hadn't ran for so long. So my hips were sore, my yeah. back was sore. And I, I kind of tried to push through it, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not a runner. I'm not going to run anymore. And I, I tried it, but for me, it was just the the niggles that I was feeling were just not aligning with what I wanted to do. I literally wanted to run because I was bored. So I then just swapped it for a normal workout, which is what I would normally do. And my body is used to that. So yeah. my, my problem has always been once I start something, I'll throw myself right into it. I give it absolutely everything that I can yeah. uh, and then pick, end up picking up some injuries. So yeah. the next section that you're going to talk about is probably the one that I need to take on. Yes. I, I was going to say, do you do flexibility, mobility training or no? Yeah, see, so that's, that's why. So, <laughs> so the next section rolling in is rest and recovery. So this does still come under the 20% exercise umbrella, or I would classify it as that. Um, but I feel like along with nutrition, this is something that people do not realize the benefit of and, and the importance of, because it's, it's pretty much the component of any training program that is missed the most, unless you are focusing in on it. And I definitely know for here at the gym, um, we used to do stretching at the end of our classes and with the whole COVID thing and people hanging around from last COVID, it's something that we stopped. And I know that so many people are like, yeah, I'll stretch at home. Nobody stretches at home. Everyone would be saying how sore they are the next day. And I'm like, okay, did you stretch? Did you do your flexibility and mobility? And then they say no. So people are saying they're going to do it with all intentions, but not actually doing it. And this doesn't just come with rest and recovery after your, after your sessions. It's rest and recovery in general of your training program. And it's really important because a lot of people get so stuck into their training that they think they have to train six days a week to be getting results. And you don't. It is so not true. You need to be having a really good balance of rest and recovery to training and exercise because when you're exercising, that, that is essentially a form of stress on your body. So your body is going through a really stressful time in that moment when you're exercising for that hour or however long. And you need to pretty much undo that stress and you need to relax your body out of that. So when let's just refer to like lifting weights. When you're lifting weights, you're, you're hardening your muscles, you're growing your muscles. And what's actually happening when you're doing that is you're shortening the muscle as well. So over the time of that training session, um, and you know, you would know yourself after you've done weights, you kind of do feel a little bit blown up because everything, there's all the blood flowing to those muscle groups that you've just trained. And it's really, really important that we do stretch and focus on our mobility and flexibility after 
to lengthen all of them. You're going to get better results if you add in your rest and recovery, stretching and mobility after your workouts or, you know, however many times per week. And it doesn't have to be a long session. Like you don't have to stretch for an hour, just a five to 10 minute stretch to just release everything through your body is all that you need. And it's also really calming for your mindset as well. So with the rest and recovery in terms of training, that's what I would suggest with that. Um, in terms of like your training program and rest and recovery, it's really, really important that we listen to our bodies and start to understand what our body is trying to tell us. So obviously with your little niggles and your knee injuries and things like that, you're not going to keep going and doing a program that's going to be doing jump squats and making you do sprints and, and stuff like that. Like that's just stupid really, because you're asking yourself to be injured for a long period of time by doing that. And you're just adding that stress and that pressure on that injury without letting it recover properly. And this is where a lot of people really, really struggle because they feel like, because they're not doing anything, they're not going to be getting the goals or the results that they want, but you need your body again, as I said, three sessions at 100% effort is better than, you know, six sessions at 50% effort when you're, you've got an injury and you're only applying yourself with half of the effort that you can. And you need to listen to your body because your body will burn out. And it's trying to tell you that you need to stop doing what you're doing and let it recover and rest, right? And in terms of your training program, it's really important to schedule in your training days, as I've said, but also your rest days. So you need to have rest days. This need, this is for your body to just relax, unwind, and just literally work its magic from what you've just done with your training program and your training session. And as I said at the start, this is where people struggle. So it's, it's really important. I always recommend at least two or three, if you can, rest days per week. So then you know you're fully recovered, you're rested, and then you know you're going to have enough energy and perform at your best when you are actually doing your session. But trying to tell that to people that like to exercise six days a week is very, very difficult. And then they do not, they do not listen to you and they want to just keep going. And they're probably overtraining as well. So they're putting themselves at risk of plateauing and burning out. And then they're the people that are going to come back to the facility or the program coordinator and say that it's not working, but they're not actually factoring those in. So my tips would be um, definitely factor in two to three rest days per week. Um, yoga, meditation, flexibility, mobility, just a basic stretching routine. That's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be something that's like hours and hours long. Um, and three, two to three times per week, if you can, and also try and balance out that rest, rest to exercise ratio so that it is a balanced program for you. Um, and watch your results just flourish from there because you're, you're focusing on your mobility and your flexibility, which is a really, really important part of that training program as well. And listen to your body. You have to listen to your body. Great advice. Yeah, that's all really good advice. So, so what I'm going to do, um, so at, at the moment, I, and because, you know, you sent me an email earlier to say what, what we're going to talk about today, and it's probably uh, it coincided with something else that I was reading. So I jumped on the scales for the first time in months um, and almost had a heart attack. And when you're 52, that's not a good idea. So, um, so I was at 96.3 kilos. Um, at the end of June, I was at 87 kilos. Um, so... I'm going to make this commitment to myself and to you, Chantel. So I'm going to go away from today's session. I'm going to write down some bits. I'm going to set myself a schedule, right? And each month when we get back on to do another session, I'm going to let you know where I'm up to. All right? Ah, so, so each great. month when we get onto these sessions, I'll let everybody know where I'm up to. So today, note it down, I'm at 96.3 kilos and incredibly unfit. Um, and there's been times where I've been pretty fit um, you know, based on, on age and activity and that sort of stuff. But um, so my aim and target is to get back down to 85 uh, is the target. Um, I'm not putting a time period on that. Um, let's just do it month by month and see how we go. That's good. On that point as well, it's really important that, so doing this, everybody struggles with this, but I feel like being a female dominant gym, it's more... Um, prominent in females of obviously weighing yourself and 
I would probably on that point urge you to come and get a body scan done on our body scan machine because your overall weight actually changes every single day depending on what you've eaten, how hydrated you are. You're not a, a woman, but women <laughs> will fluctuate around that time of the month as well yep. because you, you fluctuate with your water retention. Um, so weighing yourself is good, but it's going to go up and down all the time. So you, you just be prepared for that. I don't know if I want the results of the body scan. It's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> no, the body, scans, the body scans are really beneficial because your overall weight is literally everything in your body. It's your muscle, your um, water, it's your skeletal, like your um, skeletal system. It's everything. And that's why it's not... 100% accurate all the time when you're looking at like a fat loss model um, or focusing on like um, a muscle gain model as well, because it's, it's telling you everything and more so for women than men, because we do fluctuate with hormones a lot more than what men do. Body scans are really, really beneficial because it, it does give you all of that data that a lot of people don't like to see, but it tells you your fat mass, your fat, um, your visceral fat, which is also really important. And the scan machine that we've got actually works out um, the square meterage of visceral fat, which is wow. a really good visual for people. Um, your circumference, your muscle mass, everything. And it's it's really good to see that as well. So that's why I always urge people to not just weigh themselves, but I would also say if you're at home, do measurements as well, because that's how you're going to know as well that not just that overall weight. While it's good to track, it's not the be all and end all because it's going to yeah. fluctuate. <laughs> good, good idea. Well, when you get back open up, maybe I'll, um, I'll accept the invitation and come back to, come down to do that. <laughs> Well, that was awesome, Chantel. Um, I think um, next month we'll we'll have another interesting session. Um, some more great advice from uh, Technofunk Fitness Studios at Norellan in Campbelltown. Uh, I really hope they pull the dates forward for you and you can get back open up to your group sessions. Um, yeah. Yeah, because that'll, that'll be a lot of fun for a lot of people who are absolutely hanging out for it, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite busy when we do come back. So that's exciting to get back into it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I think that will wrap it up there um, and uh, we'll see you again next month. Okay. Thanks Excellent. for having me. Thanks, Chantel. Bye.